all good morning. I woke up feeling so much better today, which is nice. Yeah, I just definitely was not 100% yesterday. I don't know if I was dehydrated or sick or what, but feeling much better today. Um, I guess last night I did end up taking one shot just right by camp. Um, there was a nice just kind of line of, of trees up against a cloudless sky, and I think, oh, we'll see. I, I think it might turn out like a nice minimalist shot, but probably gonna hit up above tree line and hopefully it's not too windy. Hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's nice up there. Let's see if I can get some pictures. Let's go for a hike. Okay, I think I've got a shot mostly how I like it. Um, it's fairly simple. There's basically just three bushes in the foreground that are kind of a diagonal towards the mountain. And then a tree, I'll show you in a sec, but a tree that as the mountain slopes down, it kind of meets this tree. So I, I think it'll all kind of feel nice and balanced and play, I don't know, harmoniously together. Um, interestingly, I, I've, I've got this uh, Pentax digital spot meter, which if you've, I don't know, if you're at all familiar with Nick Carver and his channel, you've probably seen that before. Highly recommend his uh, manual metering course. It's totally worth the money. Um, just interestingly enough, I had, uh, I used the app on my phone, that, like Lux or something, that's also a metering app, and it's not nearly as precise. It's just generally like a, you know, it tries to average the whole thing to 18% gray, and it had me off by several stops. It wanted me to make the picture considerably darker than I want to. So it's nice, even though this, you know, weighs an extra eight ounces or whatever, and when you're backpacking every ounce counts, it's nice to be able to very precisely meter. So I've got the shot set up. Um, I'm gonna take one with uh, the red filter and one without. So I'm starting with without the red filter. And I'm gonna go ahead and take it now. I just had a pretty big lunch, just a bunch of snacks. Dried out my socks, they were getting pretty sweaty and I didn't want to get any blisters, so took a nice uh, break up here. It's 
It's actually nice for a change. Most of the time in the summer, you really shouldn't be on on summits in the Colorado Rockies in the afternoon, but there's some clouds in the sky, but there doesn't seem to be anything building into a storm. But it's September, so I guess, I guess Labor Day weekend is probably hit or miss when it comes to the monsoon season. Um, I don't know if you can see back there, there's some like ridges. Um, I can't get down there from this angle. It's, it's, a, it's a cliff right there. But I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go back down the way I came and then see if I can get around and then maybe get closer to those uh, kind of the, the, I don't know, the scalloped edges on the cliff. Could make for a cool shot. And it's only like two something, so I've got plenty of time. And since the weather seems to be cooperating, as well as my knee and the rest of my body, I'm gonna, excuse me, I think I'm gonna go wander down that way. I'm not crazy, those are antelope down there. They're all staring at me. They definitely see me. How cool is that? I've never seen antelope in the wild in Colorado before. Wow. <laughs> Man, that's just the coolest thing. There's no way I'm gonna be able to get any closer than this to them and they're like, I don't know, two, three hundred yards away. <laughs> I started walking with my tripod, like up and like upside down, like splayed out to kind of look like antler antlers. I did not fool them. I think I read someone, maybe Galen Rowell or someone, say in a book that they were uh, they were able to get a lot closer to deer or something. Uh, actually, I think it was caribou. So he was able to get a lot closer to caribou by just using like ski poles or uh, a tripod, kind of like upside down up in the air. I, I, I don't remember if that's correct or not. Wow, that is so unexpected. shot for the day. I kind of like these two peaks uh, and kind of like this ridge line right here. I mean you'll see the composition. Um, I'm thinking about doing it with my 80 mil lens and then uh, it's a little bit wider than I want but the 150 is a little tight and I'll probably just uh, I'll either just deal with the 80 or crop it a little bit but not a bad view. Hopefully it turns into a good picture. While I was setting up the main shot that way, I ended up taking a shot of this this hill in the background because that cloud next to it was arranged nicely and I thought it would look good. So I did that with a red filter. Um, yeah, now I'm just going to finish this one and then that finishes off the roll. Yeah, the tripod's vibrating a little bit. It's, the, it's a pretty good tripod, but it's pretty windy.
three, two, one. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I just wanna take a couple minutes at the end of these videos to kind of talk through uh, lessons learned, some thoughts on the pictures, especially now that it's been a while since the actual trip and I can sort of separate my memory of the, you know, the moment and the beautiful nature from the actual photos that I created. Obviously, uh, I still know that I took them and I still have those memories. So I'm, there's no way I'll ever be completely objective about it, but having you know a few weeks or a month of just like distance there really, I, I find helps maybe slightly more objective about it. So. Um, yeah, I'll, keep, I'll try and keep it somewhat brief, but I can definitely ramble a little bit. So if you're not a photographer and you're just watching this for the pretty nature, this is probably a good time to click off. But if you are a photographer, hopefully there's some something that you can learn in here. Uh, I've got notes here, but this is actually part of a, a three night trip I did with some friends. I guess this was early September, so about a month ago. Um, they were doing a little bit of fly fishing out in the flat tops wilderness and asked if I wanted to join them and just bring my camera. So for one of the days, I uh, just kind of went off and did my own thing and took pictures, and that's the that's the day that you just saw. I did shoot um, a couple of pictures that I'll show you here in a sec, and do a little bit of video on the the day before, on the Saturday of the trip. But I wasn't feeling super great, um, and so the video was just terrible. It was so boring, and uh, I just wasn't excited about it when I was editing it. So I decided just to start the video on Sunday morning. So. Um, yeah, that happens sometimes. A lot of times you go out and shoot pictures and it's not a, a super successful trip, but I'm not always gonna show the boring parts because they're boring and you wouldn't watch all the way through to the exciting stuff at that point. So just know that that happens. You just don't always see those days. Um, but yeah, let's talk through some of the pictures. Um, so this is the first shot that I shot on the, I guess the day before you saw. I really, at that point, was just trying to get a photo under my belt um, just to get the film loaded and kind of get the momentum going. And I thought it was a nice scene, to be honest. I didn't really, oh, well, that's fun, whatever. I didn't really see this, um, this shadow here, even though it's super obvious in the photo. Um, I saw this trail here leading up to the mountain. And I, you know, in the video that you, that you didn't see, I talked about how I wasn't sure if I wanted to include trails in these photos because it was really a project about the wilderness area. Um, turns out it didn't really matter because you basically don't see the trail at all. All you see is this slightly diagonal line of a shadow. But I think it actually works okay. I think it kind of balances this um, dark band across the, the top third of the image. I think it works okay. Um, I took the the image without the red filter, like you're seeing here, and then with the red filter. And um, I don't know if I got the exposure exactly right on that one because it looks a little brighter on the red filter, which is this one. Um, you'll also notice the lens flare here on both of them, um, which I don't love. I guess I don't have a lens hood for any of my lenses and didn't shade this, this uh, the camera in the shot apparently. But with the filter on, you see the, 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 um, the what's it called? Uh, the lens flare, jeez. The lens flare is kind of, it's, there's like more layers of flare here because of the filter and I don't like that. So I don't, I don't love either of these. I do like this one better. So without the filter in this case. Still definitely figuring out in which cases I prefer with the filter and without. Um, so because film is not super expensive, it's sort of expensive, it's not incredibly expensive. I can, in most cases, I find it worth it to shoot doubles, you know, to shoot one one shot, one frame with the red filter and one without. Um, sometimes I'll do it with different focus distances and, and just different things that I'm testing out for science. So that was an okay shot. This is a, a slightly worse version of that same shot. Um, then later that evening, I took this shot, which is my favorite from the trip by far. I was eating dinner with friends and uh, looked down and uh, it was pretty dusky. If that's a word. It was, it was very much at dusk and um, these trees were super still and there weren't any clouds in the sky or 
Actually, you can see a couple down here. It's kind of the only thing I don't love about the image, but I don't think anybody notices that except for me. And I also don't think it's bad necessarily, just slight distraction there. But the sky was pretty clear otherwise. And I, I saw this um, curve right here that was a, um, a, I don't know, a nice sort of symmetrical curve and I thought it would make a nice image. And I really didn't put a whole lot more thought into it than that. I believe I did use a red filter on this one. Um, I'll flash up the, the camera settings if I can find them for all these shots somewhere on the screen during this. But um, yeah, this ended up being one of my favorite images. Got a, quite a bit of traction when I posted it on Instagram, which is not the be all and all of uh, value and whether or not an image is good, but it means that other people like it, which is nice validation that I'm not completely crazy. So that was all the first day. I didn't show any of that on the video because the video is terrible. Then I showed, starting here, the rest you've seen. Um, this was a nice shot. I really like this one. I think it's definitely my second favorite from the trip. Um, I actually had someone reach out and buy a print of this already, which is pretty awesome. So thanks to, thanks to them for doing that. If you want any prints, let me know. Uh, I don't have my print shop up right now. I'm, I'm kind of testing some new papers and deciding whether or not to or how many pictures to, to put up there and what to put up and how to price them and all that. But in the meantime, if you want anything, just reach out to me on email. Um, I'll put that up here somewhere and let me know. I'm happy to print it and I won't charge you a lot because I'm doing some tests anyway. Anyway, this was a shot that I shot right at sunrise. You can tell by the beautiful colors in this black and white shot um, that it's sunrise, but yeah, I really like it. It was just right, right down by our campsite. I think it's just nicely balanced. I don't really know what to say about it. It was beautiful reflection. I like that you can see some of the rocks down here. So it's not just a pure boring reflection. You get a little more interest down there. The one thing that I don't love that I didn't notice at the time was this, um, this log that was kind of branching out from the shore, creeped into the edge of my shot there. And I did not see that until I got the film developed. Um, so I, I darkened that a little bit down when I scanned it in, but it's not too noticeable. I just wish I would have taken a little bit more time on that one to, uh, to, to see that, to notice that it was there and to, I don't know, move three feet to the right or shift the composition a little bit. Um, overall, it's a great picture. I really like it. Um, I think it's, it's sharp. It's nice and balanced. It's uh, it feels good. I like it. Um, this one, yeah, you saw this one. Actually, I think I showed this version of it. This is with the red filter and this is without. That's a dramatic difference, right? Like that's, that shows why a red filter is a thing to, uh, you know, generally it has a lot of contrast. In this case, the, it was dramatically more contrast. That is such a boring flat image. This is only slightly boring and okay. It's fine, I think it would work better cropped here and there. So not as a square image, but this project, they're square images. And so I just probably won't use this. I also don't love this little cloud and this little cloud. That's gonna kind of be a theme for the rest of the shots for the second, for like the afternoon above tree line. The clouds were like, it was like a nice, partly cloudy summery day. Uh, it was beautiful, but what, I don't always remember to think about is that the clouds, it's not just like, oh yeah, it's a cloudy sky. Each each cloud is a, a shape and a compositional element that ends up in the picture and it makes sense to be intentional about it. And so, you know, some of these, none of the shots are great anyway, but I think for some of them, if I would have slowed down and waited for the clouds to be, you know, entirely in the frame or entirely out of the frame or just balanced nicely, I think I would have, um, made them stronger pictures. I wasn't in any rush. I should have just slowed down and waited a little bit. Overall, I think this shot's okay. I was trying to have like the diagonal line of these three bushes, but that didn't really come through. So I don't know. It's okay. I don't really have much else to say about that. Um, this shot, and I took this one without the red filter and with the red filter. In this case, I do like it a lot more with the red filter. I think the clouds are mostly arranged nicely here. I think it's a pretty good shot. It's, um, it's very simple. It's, um, I probably, I don't know if I like these two bushes here. Um, that wasn't really intentional. I didn't really spend the time to think about, you know, do I want those bushes there? Should I move? You know, the, the general composition wouldn't have changed if I moved, you know, 50 feet to the left and uh, had them, you know, not in the shot. But 
Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time on that one. I think at this point I was just trying to get through the roll so that I could get it developed, which is sloppy and not great, but it's an okay shot. I like what the red filter did to the sky here. Um, these wispy clouds are really, they pop out a lot more. It feels more, there's a lot more depth. It feels kind of 3D with a nice texture there. The without the red filter is very flat. I don't love it at all. Um, very glad that I own that red filter. You know, it doesn't work in every situation, but it's usually at least worth trying. And I, I like it a lot of the time. Um, it's an okay shot. It was very much just based on intuition. I wanted to include some of these uh, iconic flat top wilderness types of landscapes in there. So, you know, we've got these, this, this whole thing up here is basically on top of a mountain. It's just a really big plateau. And uh, I kind of wanted to get that feeling. I don't think it's a great shot, but it's not bad. Um, this next one I like a little bit more. I think there's like a little bit of, I don't know if it's a light leak or if it was when I was rolling up the film and some light got in, but the edges here are a little bit ghosted, a little bit brighter. And I darkened that down a little bit. Also, pardon the dust. I didn't clean that off of all of the versions here. Um, but yeah, there's something going on there. I'm not sure if it's user error or lab error or the camera or what, but it's sort of fixable in post. So it's not a big deal. Um, this is without the red filter. This is with the red filter. In this case, I much prefer with the red filter. I think the shot's okay. Um, I think the clouds are in a fairly good position here. This one's a little close to the edge. I like the position of this one. It fills that empty space and kind of balances out the shot well, but uh, it's an okay shot. Like there's nothing super great about this. If there was like one big fluffy cloud here and nothing else, it might've worked okay, but it's, this is one that might grow on me, but I'm not super sold on it yet. Um, it's not bad though. And then this one, actually, actually now that I look at this one again, it's growing on me a little bit more. Um, I probably could have waited for, you know, one cloud here or, you know, something a little bit better, but I, I do like, I do like this. This was with the red filter and that made a huge difference here with the dark, dark sky and just the micro contrast and it just, the scene looks a little more contrasty and crunchy this way. And then this one, uh, it's okay. The clouds, just the light wasn't great. I think I've, I'm realizing that, you know, just because I'm shooting in black and white doesn't mean that like you can shoot all day and it's going to be great. I, I mean, it, I'm glad I took this one in black and white and not in color. It would have been awful, but it's an okay shot. It's, I like the the minimalism of it, kind of the three bands of color, but overall it doesn't really do much for me. So three, two shots I love, two-ish shots that are pretty good, and then a couple okay ones. But honestly, for a roll of 12, and for being so new to shooting medium format film, I'm really happy with that outcome. It was a great weekend. Um, I'm enjoying making these videos. I'm enjoying the pace of doing about one per month. I'm doing quite a bit more photography than that. I'm just not filming it every time, which is very important to me because I find that it is harder to do good photography when I'm also focused on filming and focused on creating the story and the video. And, you know, there's just a lot more things to think about when it's just me and the, the, the film camera. I'm able to put a lot more thought into it and dive deeper and kind of get more in the zone. So I enjoy both, but I need to make sure that I do both. So I've got... Um, some amazing pictures, I think, from the Greenhorn Mountain Wilderness that I just took a couple weeks ago. There's this cloud inversion that was going through the trees and up, kind of would like flow up above me and then back down. It was amazing and there's no video of it. So the experience is just for me. But if you want to see the pictures, you can follow me on Instagram or um, subscribe to my email newsletter. If you're not an Instagram person, either one's fine with me. Um, I've got information about all of this stuff down in the description below. So check that out. Um, the next video is from a backpacking trip that didn't go nearly according to plan. It was a complete fail, but I think I got one pretty good image out of that. So that was in the Collegiate Peaks Wilderness. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if you, that'll probably be another month or so because I have a job and it takes me a long time to edit these videos. But if you want to make sure you don't miss it, then Either sign up for the email newsletter or subscribe to this YouTube channel or both. And I think that's probably it. I've got a four-day weekend 
this weekend. So I'm going to go, I think, somewhere out west. There's a couple of wilderness areas that are on the western slope, almost to the Utah border, that feel pretty deserty and look pretty cool. So I think I'm going to go spend a couple days out there and really slow down and basically try and be Ben Horn for a weekend. So looking forward to that trip. I'm probably going to make it into a video if, unless something terrible happens and it's just awful the whole weekend. But yeah, subscribe to all of the things down below and I will see you next time. Bye.